Hiya, fellas. Looking sharp, boy. Looking sharp. <laughs> New hat. Oh, fine. Who done it for you? Lily Dashie? Done it myself. <laughs> what a great guy. You can say that again, son. Meeting will come to order. Hello, Barry. Oh, how are you, Mr. John? Dirty heel? Everybody says. He's a good actor. Yeah, but he's no good. Tony! Oh, hello, Ellen. Hello. I haven't seen you since, um... Uh... Sam's point. Yes, that's right. I lost your number. I knew it was that. Yes. Well, what are you two geniuses up to? We're in the Freedom Musical. Oh, how does it look? Chaotic. Hmm. Well, good luck. Thanks. Goodbye. I'll be seeing you. Goodbye, Tony. What a darling. Dinker. What? Hello, Mr. John. Hi, Anna. Oh, Max. Enter Anthony John. Tall, handsome, charming. Shakes hands with his dearest friend and met her and sits. Good. Well, how did it go last night? Fine, fine. A riot. A, a veritable fun, fun fest. <laughs> this play agrees with you. You know that, don't you? Uh, good old Anna. Never forget. So if possible, I'd have you only in comedy always, sir. Help me. Well, why isn't it? Well, why isn't it? <laughs> Every morning after I get up, I read the play. Every night before I go to bed. 365 days a year, 730 plays. And out of the lot, if one turns up that can be produced and that's got a part for you, I'm lucky. Now listen, do me a favor and don't forget one thing. You're an actor. You don't say. A great actor. I bow. <laughs> you got a responsibility. You can't stop. You can't limit yourself. All right, don't get so excited. Well, I'm an excitable fellow. All right, now, come on, let's have it. What is all this? A fellow? Oh, listen, I was looking over that old Othello skin of yours last night. If you don't know how good that is. Yeah. You've got some good notions, all right. Good. Do you remember that thing you figured out for the ending? Yeah. Where you strangled Desdemona with a kiss? Yeah. Oh, sounds ridiculous now. You're wrong. It's brilliant. And it's believable. Isn't it, Victor? Isn't what? Isn't it brilliant? Also believable? The Othello thing. Oh. How are you, Tony? Blooming. Blooming in spite of Max. He's been giving me a scream-by-scream -scream description of my own idea. Want to do it, Tony? Do you want to direct it? I asked you first. I don't know. I don't know. I... I know, some parts give me the willies on the stage and off. Where's your ambition? All used up, Max. No, almost all used up. Ah. Well, I've come a long way with it. Remember, I was that handsome juvenile dashing on with white flannels and a tennis racket? I say, tennis anyone? Right, oh, let's have another go at it. Yes, and before that, the chorus of the student prince. I tell you, I was a happy hambo then. Vocabulary of seven words. Funny, I remember my father, even then, coming backstage for a touch, mm. telling me to get the best of it. Get the best of it, boy, boy. I never made it, see, but you can do it, kid. You can do it for the two of us. So I'd slip him a fin and he'd mosey off. I never listened to him. I never listened to anyone but Brita. That's when I got ambition, my boy, when I married Brita. That's when I wanted to be something better than I was. To be an actor, a real actor. I had to teach myself to talk, do you know it? And move, and think. I had to tear myself apart and put myself together again and again. And the leftover pieces are all scattered somewhere between here and a thousand one night stands. Oh, sure, I lost plenty. Fun and rest and friends and privacy. And that cockeyed way things have of working out, it's even cost me a breeder. Would you like to hear the story of my life? Well, he's a good actor, your old man. Ah, oh, thank you, Max, but you and I both know he died a doorman. Look, I wish you'd drop in and see the show tonight. Anything wrong? No, it's all right, but it's not bouncing along the way it used to. Who's letting down? All of us, 
Except Rita, of course. Of course. She's always wonderful. <laughs> There's something interesting, Tony, because it's none of my business. You and Brita, you've been divorced now, how long is it? Two years? And four months. All right. And you're both still in love, aren't you? Uh-huh. So? Why don't we marry again? Yeah. <laughs> we love each other too much for that. I see. See you later, friends. Now, what about the old fellow thing? Uh, look, don't count on me too much for this, Max. I got a feeling it isn't the sort of thing I... Ought to do, great or no. Think it over. We'll talk about it later. All right. Uh, we ought to think about it, too. Why? Him? <laughs> He's a sensation. For someone who's been exposed to it as much as you have, it's a wonder you don't know more about acting. What is it to know? It's a talent. Some got it, some ain't. Now, uh, when you do it like Tony does, it's much more. The way he has of becoming someone else every night for just a few hours, so completely. Now, don't tell me that his whole system isn't affected by it. I swear I never saw such a thing. Here I bring up a great proposition and everybody's as gloomy as closing in New Haven. I don't like trouble. We'll see. Yeah, all right, we'll see. Bill? Thanks. Victor here? Yeah, right over there. Just got the proofs of Breeders' new pictures for the Sunday edition. Mm -hmm. Fine, fine. Well, you hear the next publicity campaign you're gonna do. Knock you on your ear. Something new? New, old. <laughs> Tell you tomorrow. Oh, excuse me, Mr. Lasker. Wonderful man in the world. Oh, Martin. My valet? Nothing, miss. Thank you, Martin. <laughs> Just, uh, when did all this happen, Martin? Miss Cole did me the honor of accepting my proposal of marriage on May the 14th last, sir. On May the 15th, a fortnight ago... Thank you. Uh, not at all, sir. I gave you my two weeks notice and informed you that I was going to be married. You didn't say it was to my girl. It didn't seem to me proper to do so, sir. Proper? <laughs> what cheap! But what charm. No surprise to me. After all, he's a gentleman's gentleman. Beginning now, he's the ladies gentleman. I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to cry. <laughs> oh, Jackie. Oh, honey. Martin! But my dear sir, my time was up and the clock struck. I hope I've given complete satisfaction. <laughs> goodbye. 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 I say. Well, what do you think? How'd it go? Fresh to me? I know, but a couple of spots I've to oh, so start with. Oh, 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 look who's here. Shakespeare's Asian, eh? Yes? Hello, Brita. Well, come on in. Is it all right? If you don't stay too long. Hi, Gladys. Your new pictures. Oh, good. Oh, I'd better look them over in the morning. Tony and I going to. I know, I'm going too. Can I hitch a ride with you? Of course. Hey, what's all this about a new play? Something for you and Tony? Play? Sounded pretty definite the way Max talked about it. I, I thought you knew. No, I didn't. Well, I hope it's a comedy if they want me in it. Why? You've just had a year of one. You know Tony. 
When he's doing something gay like this, it's wonderful to be with him, but when he gets going on one of those deep numbers... <sighs> it sounds as if you're trying to talk yourself out of marrying him again. Think so? Listen, we were engaged during Oscar Wilde, broke it off during O'Neill, we married during Kaufman and Hart and divorced during Chekhov. Would you advise me to go through all that again? Would you take my advice? Mr. Friend, would you take my advice and clear out? She's got to get dressed. Sure, sorry. I'll be waiting. All right. Seems to me like I spent half my life trying to keep people from not going crazy. I am not succeeding. Ready, dear? Oh, come on in, darling. Well, I guess not many women would climb all the way up here to see you. Oh, you think not, eh? <laughs> You'd be surprised. <laughs> oh, look, oh, lovely beauty. Honest, it's like they were married. It's like they were engaged, which is better than married. <laughs> Let's Thank go. You. Tony, look right over tonight, will you? Try. Right. Got to go up to Gilbert's for a while. And uh, talk to Breed about it. Yeah, sure. I'll see you. Good night. Bye. Bye. Talk to Brita about what? Othello. Oh, dear. Is that on again? Well, just thinking. What about a holiday, Tony? I'll take one before I do this, if I do it at all. Oh, sure. I know those holidays. I've shared them with you. You keep remembering the rehearsal date, rushing up to meet you. You think about your part, you worry, you wake up and pace the floor all night and you go silent for great long stretches all day and those disappearances of yours. <laughs> it's a living nightmare, not a holiday. Yeah, that's right, that's right. But then what? It's not worth it, Tony. This past year's been fun, you know? There have been times when I almost thought we'd make it together again if we try. Yeah? I know if we ever got mixed up in an Othello kind of thing, it would be the end. Well, but why, baby? <laughs> you know why. Because you won't learn to leave it at midnight. I used to. Never got past playing bits and stock. And you're the one, Brita. You're the one that did that to me. Let's not forget that. Did what? Inspired me, or whatever you call it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, oh, we'll talk about it some other time. You're tired now. Come along. Let's go to the party and have a good gay time. Tell jokes to all the private people. Jokes. Jokes. <laughs> and have a gorgeous supper. How about it? Are you ready? Uh, just about. Oh, yes, that's right. Bill is coming, too. I said we'd give him a lift. Fine. Look, darling. Um, yes? Would you mind going ahead with Bill and let me come later? Why? Oh, I don't know. I'd sort of like to prowl around a bit and think this thing over. Tony? Oh, run along, darling, will you? I'll come by later. Yes, good night, Tony. Uh, goodbye, dear, and give my love to society. Matinee tomorrow, sir. Matinee tomorrow. We're almost out of gargle. I'll get some. Fine. Same kind all that? Yeah, yeah, delicious. Good night, Mr. John. Good night. Beware, my lord of jealousy. It is the green-eyed monster. All my fond love thus do I blow to heaven. Tis gone, arise, black vengeance. <laughs> Happily, for I am black. And have not those soft parts of conversation that chamberers have.
stata per tante volte paura che non avete dire. Non ci sono mai, no. No, ma che andate a pensare? Mi manca la via della campagna, non è quello. Io intanto sono preoccupata perché i ragazzi non ritornano, eppure la festa è solo che si deve assicurare il mondo. Grazie a te, ho tutto il meglio tu. Allora va a Io Cosa c'è in cacciatore? Sure stomach. Coffee? You all right? I'm fine. That's a good wine, ask me, the boss. Some talk, okay. Nice girl to dance with. I see what I can do. No, no, grazie. Meglio solo. Parli italiano. Eh, poco, poco. Bravo, bravo. Vieni, c'è servito uno che parli italiano. Always glad to take care of a new customer. Thank you. Enjoy yourself. Take good care of the fact. You from out of town? Why? I don't know. You sound like Boston. I do? Mm-hmm. I was in Boston. That's why I thought. Pretty quiet up there. Well, not the parts I was in. What part? All around. I had a pretty good job up there, too. I'm a masseuse. You don't say. Sure. You don't believe me? I can show you a certificate. I took a course in it. Masseusing? Sure. I've been out on the coast, too. California? Sure, I was in Dago, Pedro, L.A., all over. But uh, I came back east this last month. You like it better here? Well, as soon as I make a few connections, I'll like it better. Um, I uh, may try the modeling game. All you need is a few connections. That's right. You want to know my name? All right. Pat. Pat Crow. <laughs> we can call these delicate creatures ours, not their appetites. I'd rather be a toad and live upon the vapor of a dungeon than keep a corner in the thing I love for. Talking to me? No. Well, I thought you said something. Oui, oui, j'ai dit. Mais ce n'était pas quelque chose. Oh. Tu veux savoir quelque chose? Quoi? Tu es cute. I'll be uh, through here in three quarters of an hour. We could uh, tell each other our troubles, if you want to. Huh? I'm sure. make new contacts. I like 
you. You know it? No, I do. You gonna say you like me? Later. Oh, thanks. You gonna tell me your name? As soon as I know it myself, yes. Oh, don't give me that. Give you what? I've handled lines all my life. <laughs> so have I. <laughs> hey, what's so funny? Oh, it's, not, it's a private joke between me and me. Come on. What's your name? Which one? Your real name, the one you were born with. I mean, they give you one when you were born. Uh, it's not my real name. What is it? I don't know. I don't know. All right, calm down. You don't have to tell me. Look, if I could find out who I am, I'd be a happy man. You know it? Most people know who they are or think they do, which is the same thing. <laughs> Simple for them. Hmm? You want to know my name? Martin. Thank you. Also Ernest and Paul, Hamlet and Joe. And maybe Othello. Yes, and I'm French and Russian and English and Norwegian. I got mixed blood too. Yeah, all right, darling, but are you rich and poor and brave and cowardly? And in love and not and trusting and jealous, are you? What am I mixed up with here? Some kind of nut? The bawdy wind kisses all it meets. It is hushed within the hollow mine of earth and will not hear it. What committed impudence to ramp it? What's the matter? By heaven, you do me wrong. What? Nothing. I just said, what's the matter, fellow? Oh. <laughs> you're talking so funny. Like you're somebody else almost. I was. You feel all right? Oh, sure. Don't talk funny no more. All right. In fact, don't talk at all. All right. Why shouldn't Max want you to play it? All he'll have to do is to pace back and forth outside like an expectant father. Well, what do you want him to do? Play Iago? It's just that I hate to see you getting pressured into anything. Well, maybe you're not sure I can play Othello. Now, Tony. Well, I may not believe in myself, but I expect others to believe in me. That makes sense. Oh, of course. What's this for? That is for nothing. Ah, oh, thank you, darling. You'd be a smashing Desdemona, you know it. It's funny, no one has even bothered to ask me if I want to play it or not. Not you, not anyone. Oh, Grisha, right. I was the one. It's all right, oh, darling, no. I'm used to it. I, used to what? To running after you while you chase the moon. <laughs> well, if we do go ahead, it means some hard work on my blankety-blank accent. Oh, well, you will be able to manage it, I'm sure. Well, I just wanted to say that you are here on Swedish actors. No, it's not so easy. Translation, please. Oh, no. Uh, I can imagine. Right. <laughs> oh. What is it? There's nothing the tricks your mind can play. You know, somewhere in the future, I can see it all finished. I can see the whole magical production opened, praised. Uh, it feels fine to have done something worthy. And then I think of all the things that have to be done between now and then. The terrifying thought of that first rehearsal. The actor's nervous and frightened. You're in a cell telling every instant you're making a big mistake to try this. Knowing all the time you're caught, it's too late to change your mind. It's better as it is. No, no. Oh, no. yes, Tony, it's fine. Come on. No, no. I'm trying to make someone else's words your own, thoughts your own. Over and over and over. Thou cunningest pattern of excelling nature. 
You whip your imagination into a frenzy. The key to the character, jealousy. You dig for it within yourself. What does it feel like, real jealousy? Try to remember jealous moments in your own past. Jealousy. Jealousy. Find it, hold it, live it. Jealousy! <laughs> and the hours when you worry about nothing but shoes. And props. And makeup. And the costume fittings. And then the dress rehearsals. The heartening moments when it seems to be going right. The inevitable things that go wrong. Nerves, arguments, changes. Far, far into the night. Pills to help you stay awake. <laughs> and pills to help you sleep. The part begins to seep into your life. And the battle begins. Imagination against reality. Keep each in its place. That's the job. If you can do it. And all at once, it's opening night. And you look out at the audience, terrifying monster with a thousand heads. in a kind of trance, only vaguely aware that the curtain is about to go up. Places, please. And then somehow, the next thing you know, the play is almost over. The last scene is about to begin. And you remember that you're on a stage, in a theater, an audience in front of you. Suddenly, suddenly you're startled by the sound of your own voice. Yet I'll not shed her blood, nor scar that whiter skin of hers than snow, and smooth as monumental alabaster. Yet she must die, else she'll betray more men. You try to hang on desperately. You're two men now, grappling for control. And Othello. Put out the light. And then put out the light. If I quench thee, thou flaming minister, I can again thy former light restore should I repent me. Once put out thy light, thou cunningst pattern of excelling nature, I know not where is that Promethean heat that can thy light relume. I must weep. But they are cruel tears, sorrows heavenly, it strikes where it doth love. She wakes. Oh. Who's there? Othello. Aye, Desdemona. Will you come to bed, my lord? Have you prayed tonight, Desdemona? Aye, my lord. If you bethink yourself of any crime unreconciled as yet to heaven and grace, solicit for it straight. Alas, my lord, what do you mean by that? Well, do it and be brief. I will walk by. I would not kill thy unprepared spirit. No, heaven forfend, I would not kill thy soul. Talk you of killing? Aye, I do. Alas, why no, you saw you never lived. Some bloody passion shakes your very frame. You all right, Mr. Friend? Opening night jitters. Your eyes. Look, Why Mr. Donlon and Mr. Lasker ask me, tell them I'm in the bar across the street. They've been there since the second act. Oh? 
But yet I hope, I hope they do not poison me. Please and be still. I will so. Oh. What's the matter? That handkerchief which I so loved and gave thee, thou gavest to Cassio. No, by my life and soul. Send for the man and die. Sweet soul, take heed, take heed of perjury. Thou art on my deathbed. Aye, but not yet to die. Yes, presently. Therefore confess thee freely of thy sin. For to deny each article with oath cannot remove nor choke the strong conception that I do groan with all. Thou art to die. The Lord have mercy on me. I say amen. And I have you mercy too. I never did offend you in my life. Never loved Cassio. Oh. But with such general warranty of heaven as I might love, I never gave him talk. By heaven, I saw my handkerchief in his hand. Oh, perjured woman, thou hast stoned my heart and makes me call what I intend to do a murder, which I thought a sacrifice. I saw the handkerchief. I found it then. I never gave it him. Send for him hither, let him confess the truth. He hath confessed. What, my lord? That he hath used thee. How? Unlawfully? Aye. He will not say so. No, his mouth is stopped. Honest Iago has taken order for it. Oh, my fear interprets. What is he there? Had all his hairs been lives, my great revenge had stomach for them all. Alas, he's betrayed. And I undone! Out, trumpet! Weep thou for him to my face! Oh, banish me, my lord, but kill me now! Down, trumpet! Oh. Kill me tomorrow, let me live tonight! Nay, if you strive! But half an hour! Being done, there is no pause! While I say one prayer! It is too late! <laughs> It's almost over, Mr. Lasker. What? Well, you told me to tell you when it was the last scene. Oh, sure. Thanks. Last scene. What play? Our play. Oh, it's good. There's a murder in it. You don't say. <laughs> who to who? What? Who murders to who? Tony. Tony murders this girl. Kills her dead. With a kiss. Ridiculous. Mm. Unbelievable. Tonight, he murders this girl. <laughs> Tomorrow, they'll probably murder him. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. How came you, Cassio? By that handkerchief that was my wife's. I found it in my chamber. And he himself confessed even now that there he dropped it for a special purpose which wrought to his desire. Oh, fool, fool, fool. You must forsake this room and go with us. Your power and your command is taken off. And Cassio rules in Cyprus. You shall close prisoner rest so that the nature of your fault be known to the Venetian state. Come, bring away.
Soft, you. A word or two before you go. I have done the state some service, and they know it. No more of that. I pray you, in your letters, when you shall these unlucky deeds relate, speak of me as I am. Nothing extenuate, nor set down aught in malice. Then must you speak of one that loved, not wisely, but too well. Of one not easily jealous, but being wrought, perplexed in the extreme. Of one whose hand, like the base Judean, threw a pearl away, richer than all his tribe. <laughs> one whose subdued eyes, albeit unused to the melting mood, dropped tears. As fast as the Arabian trees, their medicinable gum. Set you down this. And say besides that in Aleppo once, where a malignant and a turbaned Turk beat a Venetian and produced the state, I took by the throat the circumcised dog and smote him thus. Oh, bloody period. All that spoke is marred. I kissed thee ere I killed thee. No way but this, killing myself to die upon a kiss. This did I fear, but thought he had no weapon. For he was great of heart. Oh, Spartan dark! More fell than anguish, hunger, or the sea. Look on the tragic loading of this bed. This is thy work. The object poisons sight. Let it be hid. Myself will state aboard. And to the state, this heavy act with heavy hearts. That's it, boys. Thank you. You were wonderful, Tony. Congratulations, Tony. Perfect and marvelous performance, really. Tony, it was the best thing you've ever done. If you'd 
never played anything else. My dear, I, this is really. Or if you never play anything again. Well, I hope so. <laughs> now, now, Tony, I don't want you to monopolize Dolly all evening. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Are you all right, dear? You ask me that every six minutes. I care every six minutes. Yes. I don't deserve you, Brita. <laughs> Maybe that's why you haven't got me. There isn't much justice on earth, but there is some. I burst out crying. It's going to be your fault. If you don't give me a hand with a Hollywood contingent, I'll... Sure, sure, Viva. I'm all right, run along. Three weeks' salary. And worth it. Thank you. Look at me, Tori. I'm a Christmas tree here. From Max. Lovely. From Victor. My, my. And look here, from Maine and Douglas. Oh, never seen better. Here, look. A locket from Bill. Isn't that sweet? Yeah. Yeah. Yours is my favorite, Tony. Oh, would you like to go to Look, Boston? darling, I'm a little bit late. Do you mind? Yes. And uh, you better hurry. Yes, that's right. I better. Thank you. Thank you again. This is a trick to put me from my suit. Pray you, let Cassie be received again. Fetch me the handkerchief. My mind, Miss Gill. Come, come, you'll never meet a more sufficient man. The handkerchief. Pray you, talk me of Cassio. The handkerchief. A man that all his time had found it. Good fortune on your love, shared dangers with you. The handkerchief! In sooth, you are to blame. Oh. Oh. Zound! Crack it off stage, it. clumsy fools. Yeah. Next time that happens, I'll crack him over the head with a stage He didn't mean to, Tony. He didn't mean to. I don't care whether you meant to or not. All right, Tony, all right. Anyone doesn't like it, or you don't like it. Let's hear about it, that's all. I'm trying to find a way to make everybody happy. Okay, Mr. John. Press man, for the love of Mike, don't fuss. Ready, Mr. John? Overload. If I 
give my wife a handkerchief. Hey, with him. Send for him hither. Let him confess the truth. He has confessed. What, my lord? Hey, he hath used thee. How? Unlawfully? Aye. Aye. He will not. Aye. He will not say so. No, his mouth is stopped. Anisiago has taken order for it. Oh, my fair interprets. What is he dead? Had all his hairs been lives. My great revenge had stomach for them all. Uh, alas, alas, he's betrayed and I am done. Oh, strumpet. Oh, Weep thou for it to my face. Oh, banish me, my lord, but kill me not. Yeah, banish you down. Down, strumpet. Kill me tomorrow, let me live tonight. Hey, if you strive. But, um, but half an hour. Oh. Tony, 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 please. That is, there is no pause. But I say one prayer. It is too late. What's going on? What's the matter with him? Mr. John, Mr. John, be careful, please. What is he doing? Mr. John, please. Stop him. Do something. Mr. John, Mr. John. You're a cue, for heaven's sake. Knock. My lord! My lord! My lord! Oh, good, my lord. I would speak a word of it. If you'd only leave her alone for a few minutes, Mr. John. And you keep out of this. Now, I'm warning you. Who's there? Well, what's the trouble? Well, what the... Hello, Tony. Mm, who sent for you? I did. Holy jumping now. Now, this is... Nothing, a... doctor, really. It's just a little accident. My delicate oh. leading lady can't be kissed now without sending for a doctor. Well, let's see. I'm afraid we overdid it a bit. Right at the top of the scene. Advice, direction, yelling it out. I'm sorry, Tony. I'm oh, sorry. Who do you think we're playing to? An audience of deaf mute? Tony, shut up. Rita, I'm sorry. <sighs> Tony. I'm sorry, darling. You know, I died before I hurt you. You know that, don't you? Yes. I know it, I know it. All forgiven, Tony. All forgiven. Gently. What a business, for heaven's sake, what a business. <laughs> close your eyes, Tony. Yeah? Surprise coming, close your eyes. Oh. All right, now. Well. Good. Well, strike me pink. Thank you. Well, I never. Oh, stop it, Tony. Stop what? Making fun of me. Was I? Oh, let's eat it. <laughs> Sorry. It's all right. It's all right. I'd like to have risen to the occasion. I don't know what's the matter with me. I mean, I do know what's the matter with me. Sorry, Brita. It's a beautiful cake. It's a beautiful idea. It's a beautiful thing for you to have done. Let's not go too far, huh? <laughs> do I get to eat myself? No novelty in that, is there? Sticks and stones should break my bones, etc., etc., etc. It's from our wreath. What is? The cake. Oh. Oh! Restful here, isn't it? So far. Sort of sentimental. Well, I'm as sentimental as the next fellow. By the way, what about him? Who? The next fellow. Well, I don't know. Oh, you're a good enough press agent, but do you think Tony? that he... What? New subject. Why? Well, I don't like this one, as it's my party. 
You gonna marry him? No. You love him? No. Do you love anyone? No. No? Oh, Tony, leave me alone. Finished your cake? I don't want it. You can't have your cake and eat it. And not want it. Oh, you fool. Tony. New subject? Good. Now, what do you think you might like to do next? What play? Yeah. Why, Max says we'll do another year in this. Oh, not with me. Oh? Oh. Tired of it? No, sick of it. Sick. Perhaps you should stop then. Yeah, perhaps. But you see... What? I don't know which is worse, with a part or without. Without one, I'm alone. Bad for me. Don't like myself very much. Don't say that. Well, it's true. The only answer was you. Tony. Nothing but failure there. Not all your fault. All mine. Whose fault was that? Fault? Oh, we're both responsible for all our good things and all our bad. You don't really believe that, do you? No. Mostly me. Yes. Always? Mostly. And I don't suppose you'd want to marry me again, will you? No, I wouldn't, darling. Why not? Because if at first you don't succeed, don't try again. Isn't that how it goes? No. Rita, you're my only friend. Help me. Anything, anything, Tony, but let's not try marrying again. You're stuck on the guy, are you? Oh, don't be idiotic. Why, Bill is... Don't there. call him that. That's his name. I don't care. Oh, Tony. Get away. Is he smooth? Is he charming? Does he speak gently? Does he write lovely stories about you? Does he dance well? I don't. Remember, do you? Does he listen? Does he sympathize? And what else does he do? Does oh, he... Stop it. Stop it. Stop it, Tony. You want me to go, huh? Yes. Right, I will. Now, Tony, listen. I don't want to see him and his silly, lovesick face around the theater. Now, you tell him that oh, or I will. Oh, Tony. Meet him anywhere you like. Meet him here or at his place or in a rowboat in Central Park. Go away, Tony. Go away. Go now. No. Careful. No 
no control, go home. Go, she said, go now. Brita and Bill. Bill and Brita. Heaven truly knows that thou art false as hell. to see me. Pat, Pat, help me, Pat. Where is it? Where is she? There's the Mona. No, Rita. Oh, now forever, farewell, the tranquil mind. Farewell, content. Help me. Brita! Brita! No. Pat! Open up. Who is it? Me, me. Oh, Pat. Surprised to see me? I sure am. You got your nerve? Yeah. You wake me up. I'm sorry. What do you take me for? Hey, you look different. Do? Oh, what's the idea? Middle of the night. Had to see you. Important. Hey, where you been lately and all that? I've been away. Like out of town? Yeah. How come no postcard? Huh? You could at least send me a postcard. Oh, didn't have any. Who? Where I was. Where? Venice. Venice. You glad to see me? Sure I am. I'm always glad. Thank you. It's one thing I always tell the truth. Maybe that's how come I got in those studies. You do all right, though. What do you mean? How many fellows you got, Pat? Mm, a few. How many? I don't know what you mean by fella. Like me. Oh. None like you. Any press agents? What are you gassing about? Any name Bill? No. Bill. 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 Coffee's ready. Even if you wake me up. I'm glad you dropped over. Why? I don't know. I got the jitters lately. Uh, about yesterday it was. Uh, Vito down at the place, he dropped a tray of glasses. I must have jumped nine feet. You need a rest. No. It's just... I don't know. It's like I'm scared all the time. I'm going to get run over by a truck. Stuff like that. I eat a bad oyster and you gotta get the stomach pump. Hey, how do you figure it? What? Being alone so much does it a little. I may move in with Emily. You know her, Emily. No. The cashier. No. You wanna put out the light? Put out 
about the lies. Then put out the light. If I quench thee, thou flaming minister, I can again thy former light restore, should I repent me. What? But once put out thy light, thou cunning pattern of excelling nature, I know not where is that Promethean heat that can thy light relume. Listen, I think you better go. Seen Bill lately? His hairs been lives. My great revenge had stomach for them all. I, I think you must be drunk. Out, trumpet. Weeps thou for him to my face? Listen, I think you'd better go. Hounds, trumpet. What's the matter with you? Yeah. If you strive... Just one more shot, Doc. Come over here. Dead body. How'd you happen to come into the apartment? They phoned from the cafe she was working. What's the name of the cafe? Okay, for the husband oh, for the cup of coffee. Yeah. Would you repeat that name, please? Some Italian place, I don't know. Oh, come on now. You know the name of the cafe. You just... Tell me, Joe. All right, what was the name of the cafe? Ah, you don't know it's all about from my heart. So I says, talk to the dark room, not me. I know what my exposure was. You know what he is? A chowder head. A pure chowder head. I'm telling you. Whatever happened to Schofield? Remember him, big, tall guy, didn't smoke? I don't know. I heard Dulles. Yeah, some girl he had down there. Hey, Al. I couldn't find a joint. No kidding. You're good and late. That desk, I'll murder him. Look at the address he gave me. No excuse. Next time, bring a note from your mother. What's the deal? Yeah. Thanks. I got time for a cup of coffee, you think? Who's the medic? Stop it. You got time for a ten-course dinner. Ray Bonner's on it, too, though. He'll bounce him along. what I tell you? Okay, Ray? Five minutes, that's all. Get in close, Bunny. Kirk wants some heads. All right, here we go. I'm gonna say it slow now, but I'm not gonna say it twice. I got no time. You ready? Pat, K-R-O-L-L. -L. This address, age close to 30. Dead on arrival. Why are you guessing, Ray? You mind making it close to 20-something? All right, 26. Atta boy. Dead on arrival. Apparently strangled sometime between midnight and 5 a.m. No robbery, no liquor. Floyd is a waitress, an easier cafe. Look up the address. Beautiful. Hard to tell right now, I guess, fair. Attractive waitress. Several important leads. 
That's all for now. Try to have the official off the memory over five. You got anything, Doc? Uh, well, uh, it's an unusual one. Unusual. Neck, throat, unbruised. Trachea, larynx, windpipe, intact. Uh, small pressure markings uh, above and below lips indicate uh, unusual crime of passion. Unusual. A dog. Don't get too circusy now. Hey, one look, Ray. All right, but fast. Come here, now. Yes? Uh, you want a good quote? How do you mean? Kiss of death. What? This young woman, said medical examiner Roland F. Stouffer, may have been the victim of a kiss of death. Well, no, no, I don't Makes know. Makes you a very salty talker, a colorful character. Oh, well, uh... Don't you want to be a colorful character? Well... All right. Kiss of death. Good. Stop. Oh, please, stop. Good morning. Guy out there got his auto horn stuck, but good. Would you like a couple of eggs? What's the matter? Cat got your tongue? The what? Eggs. Uh, no. No, thank you. She'll be right down, she said. Thank but you. Don't fix that horn soon, I'll give a scream. Tony? Sleep terribly? Yes, thank you. And you? Quite terribly, thank you. Oh, Tony, Tony, I... I had such a bad dream. My part any good? <laughs> it's wonderful to be awake again. Yeah. Yes, it is. Whatever the terrors of the waking hours, at least you can fight them. The other kind... You're... Helpless. Yeah. Helpless. What is it? It's nothing. I... Oh! Is it that noise? I love it. Joys of the city. Oh, thank you. They're no good today. Have you noticed how nothing happens lately? No, I haven't. I have, I have. You said it. I always agree. It saves so much time. i see you tonight. Wait a minute. Be a good friend and stay a while. I'm afraid I can't do either. I'm sorry, I must uh, have to get home anyway. Why? Well, if you must know, and if I have to tell you, I need a shave. <laughs> and thank you for the use of um, whatever it is I use. See you tonight. Do you want to see him, Mr. Cooley? Cooley? Yeah. Al Cooley, you want to see him? Al. Hiya, man. Hiya, man. Come on in. Relax a little while, huh, kid? It's a pleasure. Well, what brings you up around here? You know me, a man for a fast buck. I got quite a proposition here. Uh, go ahead. First, I ask you, are you interested in getting a lot of space for your uh, Othello show? The answer is yes. Next thing, it's worth more off the theater page, right? Right. Front page is even better, huh? Well, if this is some kind of gag, I like it. 
very busy. I can see your tongue hanging out, Buster. We out. Come on, come on. Well, look. I'm on this job, see? A very routine knockoff. A girl, waitress or something, strangled. So we're listening to the handout, and it's no good. Sorted. You know, they're no good when they're sorted. So then a medical examiner, Stouffer, you know him? No. Huh? Dr. Roland F. Stouffer, a pinhead. He drops something, and I catch an angle. Like what? Like he says, it could be she was the victim of a kiss of death. He said that? He said that. A very salty talker, a colorful character. I'm way ahead of you. You go for it? Me? Yes, I love space. But on something as big as this, I'd have to talk to Tony John. Why? Well, he's a big man for dignity. This is dignity. Depends on how you handle it. With dignity, naturally. Dr. Roland F. Stouffer, the department's medical examiner, said the attractive young waitress was a victim of what he termed a kiss of death. He likened the crime to the murder of Desdemona in a current Broadway production of Othello. That's not dignity? That's all right. What's it worth? And don't tell me two tickets. I would like some dough and I'll buy my own tickets. Name it. All right. With a little help, I can keep you hot for uh, nine or ten days. Make it a hundred a day. For as long as I can keep you riding high, and you can be the judge of when that is. Fair? Fair. If I get killed for this... If you get killed, I don't get paid. Watch yourself. I better be moving. Can I have a look at your stills? Yeah, sure. Tony. I looked for you at the office. I'm sorry, this doggone scientist got me down today. Have you seen this? Why, yes. Well, why didn't you show it to me? Tommy, Tommy, please. Well, why didn't you? Well, please. This makes me look such a fool. Isn't there something you can do to well, get this? I, I don't own the papers, Tony, after all. Did you have anything to do with this? Well, not exactly, yeah. What do you mean, not exactly? Well, it was some other guy's idea, but I okayed I it. I see. What are you trying to do to me? Oh, nothing, Tony. You're making a thing of it. You heal. Now, wait a second. You dirty heal. You're through. I'll see to that. Well, fine with me. Look, you get this stuff killed or I'll... Or what? You do it. You do it. Do it. Wait a minute. dream. You're part of a bad dream. Right with him. Yes, sir? I'm a friend of Al Cooley's. Al? I'm Max Laska's press agent. Well, he's a theatrical producer. Yes, I've heard of him. Sit down. Bill Friend, that's my name. Heard of you, too. If you want me in the show, I'm, I'm pretty busy. Well, no. It's just that I... I've got an angle about this Pat Kroll thing. What do you mean exactly, angle? I think I may know who you're looking for. Or anyway, it's a hunch. You're a little late. It's all over. 
it is. Crack just after lunch. Well, who? Who? Can you tell me? Sure. Joe, some poor slob. Joe, see if this gets down to the inspector. Some poor slob lives right across the hall from her. Claims he was drunk and doesn't remember the details, but we remember the details, so that's all right. Oh. Everybody wants to be a detective. I think it's all these radio serials. What was your hunch? What's the difference? That actor in your show? Well, yes. Say, <laughs> you guys will do anything to get in the papers. No, no, really, I... We checked your mail. You did? Yes, looked good, too, for a minute. Turned out he'd been out all night that night. Yes? With his leading lady. His wife used to be. I know. We checked the whole deal with her maid. Well, that's that. Why don't I mind my own business? <laughs> it's out of trouble. Dear. No trouble. Sugar, cream? Neat. Nothing seems to improve it any. Would you rather have something no, else? No, no. This is fine, thank you. All right. How long will you be gone? I, I don't know. Poor Max is in a tough spot. Tony wants him to fire me, but... Well, I'll take a vacation. Maybe it'll all blow over in a little while. We'll miss you. Speak for yourself, lady. <laughs> all right, then. I'll miss you. Thank you. Bill. Yes? Oh, Bill. I won't try to explain Tony to you. It's too long, too complex. But try to understand. There is a kind of an emotional illness that comes over him sometimes like this. He's a good man, really. I know. When he acts for a long stretch of time, you know how he probes and probes and... He seems to release feelings and imaginings that aren't his own at all. Like this sick jealousy. It isn't like him. No. And why on earth he should suspect you? One reason. What? Because he knows what I feel. Bill. Yes? Oh, Bill, have you ever... No. Never a word. To him, from him. But he knows, Breeder. The same instinct that makes him a great actor, makes him know, makes him feel somehow my love for you in the surrounding air. It's time you knew anyway. I don't know what to say. Well, think of something. I'll, I'll be back in a few weeks. I don't know what I'm doing. All this tea, I guess. Goodbye, Brita. Oh, Bill. Yes? Oh. Bill. I, I know what to expect. I, I know how it is with you and him. Oh, no, you don't. We hardly know ourselves. Whenever we meet, we row. The other night, for instance, I tried so hard to make friends. It ended with a door slam. Yet in the morning I found him here, he had come back somehow. Not the first time. He's always wandering off in his lonely way. He needs someone, but I'm sure I'm not the one. Sure. sure. Bill? Thank you. Thank you for standing by. Goodbye. Bill. Goodbye. Too, John. Good. 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 Are you speaking to me? No, but thanks a minute. 
You've had a few, huh? Mind your business. Everybody's always yapping at everybody. What a world. Nate, Bill, listen, I, uh, I need a girl for a job. Very special. Must be about 5'4", blonde, buxom, blue-eyed. You got that? Fine. All right, now, Oscar Bernard's. Yeah, you know the wig place. It'll be ready Saturday, I think. Well, what's the job? Well, I want to get one of these girls to look like this. eyebrows, Oscar. Yeah, heavy like. Makes her look hard and tough. Uh, I don't know. It may be the photo. I'll take this one. Now here she looks well, kind of soft and sweet. Angelo type. Oh, well, I understudied in Claudia. No, you're letting the blonde hair throw you. You can tell better by the mouth, see? Sensuous, sexy. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, did you see me in the rugged path? Hmm? No. The sister-in-law. Oh, yes. Uh, uh Would you come in now, dear? Just have a seat out there, honey. I want to try something, huh? Sandra Michelson. Fine. I, I, I do imitations. I'll bet. Now, she had eyes like the other one. I understudied in Claudia. Fine. Let me play around here for a few minutes, see what I can do. All right. But you think you can work something out? Oh, sure. This is nothing. Phone in the back? Help yourself. Why? It makes me bilious, that's why. Because you drink it with cream, that's why. With milk. That's why it makes you bilious. Milk. Hello, Tony. Bill. Fine. Oh. Oh, Tony, forget it. Well, no, it's just that I... Well, I'm leaving town tomorrow, and, uh... There are a few loose ends I'd like to straighten out with you. Much more to do. Well, like the Drama League broadcast and uh, that post piece? Yes. How about around five? Frank's bar, all right? Fine. Fine. See you then. Fine. Without anything, it's too bitter. Like medicine. In the highest class places, you'll see them drinking it without anything. Plain black. So how do you know it don't make them bitters? I didn't say it didn't. So? It's a question of habit. Captain Bonner, please. These are the earrings. Fine. Say, honey, would you ask that new girl back there to put these on? Sure. Um, one of these days, don't forget me. I don't get up to this part of town very often. It's lively. Maybe even livelier in a few minutes. What do you got against the guy? Nothing. <laughs> Believe me, not a thing. I, I just think he's dangerous. I saw him once. There's something about coal mines. Wasn't he in that? The earth below, yes. Oh, yeah, that was it. He was fine. Here we go. Hello, Tony. What do you have? Oh, nothing, thanks. Coffee? Yeah, all right.
Has your order been taken? No, miss. Two coffees. Sugar, no cream. Great little juggling act you got there. All right, all right. So Noise around this joint. Look. I'll talk to you later at the theatre. I got something there, but I'll be doggone if I know what it is. That isn't enough. You can't seem to link it. It's a long way from here to Mulberry Street. A nickel on the subway. Let's go down. Suppose they'd go home now, do you? If we asked them nicely. No, they'd want their money back. They're welcome. I just can't face it tonight. There's nothing left. Oh, Tony, shh. Tony. Oh. Tony. Come on. You've reached the nightmare stage. This bad one the other night. It's about this very scene. Tony. It was awful. Come on. Place this place. Come on now. That's it. Don't be surprised if I don't come on. You'll come on, all right. That's it. Peekaboo. Curtain going up. One for the money, two for the show. Three to get ready. Four to go. I'm more interested in what her friends look like, if you know what I mean. Well, uh, it was just two I seen. One was small, but you know, chunky. She said he was a fine dancer, but... How tall? Five foot nothing, no more. Who else? Well, that old guy with the little beard I told you about. He must have been a relative, I think. No, that's not him either. Wait a minute. Makeup? Hmm? Well, he, he might have fixed himself up. Yeah. What did he look like, the beard guy? Oh, skinny. Big eyes with glasses. Never no haircut. How old? 66, 7, 70. This? This? This anything like it? No, nothing like that. <laughs> What's the matter? I don't know this guy, but I got a feeling I've seen him somewhere before. Ronnie eye, something. What about this? I don't know. Think. Yeah. Wait a second. Yeah, 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 I seen him. He came in once, just once late, made a date with Pat. I found out the next day. 
I remember because I got sore. Yeah, I'm sure that's a guy. We're getting close now, boy. I'm afraid so. Let's go. Okay, I'll get my hat and coat. Demand me nothing, but you know you know. From this time forth, I never will speak words. Most heathenish and most gross. Oh, you pernicious Jesus. How came you, Casio, by that handkerchief that was my wife's? I found it in my chamber. And he himself confessed even now that there he dropped it for a special purpose, which wrought to his desire. Oh, fool, fool, fool. You must forsake this room and go with us. Your power and your command is taken off, and Cassio rules in Cyprus. For this slave, if there be any cunning cruelty that can torment him much and hold him long, it shall be his. You shall close prisoner rest. You shall close prisoner rest. Until, until that the nature of your fault be known to the Venetian state. Come. Bring away. Soft, you. A word or two before you go. I have done the state some service. And they know it. No more of that. I pray you in your letters, when you shall these unlucky deeds relate, speak of me as I am. Nothing extenuate, nor set down aught in malice. Then must you speak of one that loved. Then must you speak of one that loved not wisely, but too well. Of one not easily jealous, but being wrought, perplexed in the extreme. Judean threw a pearl away richer than all his tribe. One whose subdued eyes, subdued eyes. Small gum set you down this. Where a malignant and a turbaned Turk beat. I took by the throat the circumcised dog and smote him. Thus. <coughs> oh, bloody period. I kiss the air, I kiss the. No way, this. This did I fear. This did I fear, but thought he had no weapon. For? The object of poison sight. Let it be hid. Roshan will keep the house and seize upon the fortunes of the moor, for this is he don't need. What do you, Lord Governor, remains the censor of this hellish villain? Yes. Martin Zarf. 
Also in anguish, hunger, all the sea. Look on the tragic world. The time, the place, the torture, all in force. Myself will straight aboard. And to the States, this <laughs> heavy act, this heavy heart. Frida! Frida, where are you? Come, Rita. No. What's up? A little accident, Steve, that's all. Don't take him upstairs, bring him over here. Rex, call Dr. Mervyn, will you? Quick! Easy, easy. Let me, what is it? Let me see. What's that? Tony. Tony, oh, yes, all right, Max. I, it's all right. We've sent for the doctor. For the love of... Why? Why? Max, Max this is Captain Barney. He'll tell you. you think about, you know. Bill, you know, way back. <laughs> yes. This, the, an actor once, old-time actor, name of Kirby. Way, way back. Famous for death scenes. Don't talk, Tommy. Wait, th this Kirby. He'd finish, and from the gallery, they'd shout, die again, Kirby. Die again, and he <laughs> he'd get up and bow and die again. <laughs> Ever hear of him, Kirby? No. Uh, well, tonight, things that go through one's head. Suddenly, I thought, hope no one shouts, die again, because I couldn't have. Things that go through one's head. He's on his way, Dr. Mervyn. No, no, it doesn't feel bad now. Peaceful, really. But in my mind, I feel bad. That, that unfortunate Pat. I'll apologize to her up there. Oh, down there. Yeah, down there. A bit. Bill. Yes, Tony. Look out. Papers. Don't let him say I was a bad actor. Huh? Rita? Yes, Tony. Yes. Rita.